I'm Shauna Germain of Monty Cook Games. Our new game, No Thank You Evil, is a game of make-believe for creative kids and their families. As gamers, more and more of us have kids these days. We want to share our passion with them, and they really want to join us at the gaming table. So we've created an imaginative game that families can play together easily. The flexible rule system can accommodate young, new players, as well as older, more experienced players in the same game. So your five or six-year-old can be a smart princess. Your eight-year-old can be a strong robot who experiments with science. And your 11 or 12-year-old can try her hand at running a game. The tiered rules ensure that each of them has a fun experience appropriate to their age while all playing together. For more than a year, we've been researching kids' games and their play experiences to discover what makes a game engaging and successful for various ages, what causes hurdles, and what makes them want to play again. You can see more below about the research that we did, the flexible rules system we created, and the early playtest feedback from our gamer families. You can also help us improve the game further by backing us at one of our playtest levels. No Thank You Evil will bring your family together for a fantastic experience of creative storytelling, dice rolling, and make-believe. Hello everybody and welcome to Encounter Roleplay. My name is Will and I'm here today with the wonderful Shannon Germain of Monty Cook Games for a little Hi. chit chat and an interview. How are you doing, Shannon? Good, how are you? Thanks for having me. I'm good. I'm, good. I'm, I'm well. Um, it is uh, late over here in the UK, but uh, it's never too late to talk role-playing games. And it's been like two years since since last we've we've chatted. Um, yeah. Last time was Invisible Sun Kickstarter was coming out. <gasps> right. Oh my gosh! And we just we the the Invisible Sun boxes are right now in California, shipping, sending, coming their way to us. So it's really exciting. Super exciting. So um, we're here to talk about you know stuff. Uh, Monica Games, uh, along with your most uh, current Kickstarter, most recent one. Uh, no, thank you, evil. Um, for those guys in chat, hello, and I think we'll do a little bit of Q&A towards the end of stuff, so if you guys have questions, uh, yeah, get them ready, and uh, we'll answer some. Um, so, uh, let's, uh, let's get to it. So, so what have you guys been up to this year? Um, 2018, <laughs> late 2017, it was super busy from what I've been seeing from you guys. Yeah, we just we have such a small crew, but they're an amazing crew, and they're just, they're full of these creative ideas, and it's just mm -hmm. such good creative ideas that we really need a no person on our team to be like, no, you guys have enough to do already. Uh, but it's been really fun. So we've done, we like I said, we Invisible Sun is on its way here. And that was the biggest mm -hmm. project we've ever done. I mean, just like hundreds and hundreds of cars in this giant box that is so heavy to carry, um, but it has so much cool stuff in it. And then we did a Numenera 2 sort of Kickstarter where we... Uh, we're not doing a new edition of Numenera, Numenera but we're mm. sort of upgrading the rules and stuff, backwards compatible. Uh, that just went to the printer two weeks ago, so... Uh, and right now we're kickstarting No Thank You Evil, so we've got tons and tons of irons in the fire, so to speak. Absolutely, yeah. You guys are uh, firing on all cylinders, can't slow down. Um, <laughs> It's been great to watch, though. No, I've been I've been loving to see all of the the kickstarters coming out, and uh, yeah, since I've, since I first sort of got onto the Monty Cook bandwagon, which was back about two years ago when we started playing uh, New and Era and the Invisible Sun stuff, has been like knocking out the park, uh, shrink to shrink. So it's been uh, great to see as someone who's a big fan of you know uh, the independent publishers and in the in the role playing game space. Um, uh, the Numenera one, you guys like raised close to a, a million dollars on Numenera too. Yeah, really close. It was wow. our biggest Kickstarter ever, um, and it was it was we just had so much fun because it was a chance to take all this feedback we'd heard from players over five years and and make something just a little bit better uh, without sort of breaking the rules, you know, without doing a new edition, without making your books incompatible, and so. It was. It's been really fun to work with this design team and be like, okay, well, what if what if players asked for? What if GMs asked for? How can we make mm. this more fun? And um, so that's been. I don't know. That's that's always my favorite part is to take stuff that players are like, give us this thing, and, and find ways to make that happen. I really like that part. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a, a fair amount of change from from uh, Numenera one, I suppose, to uh, to Numenera two. Um, what's what's it like, kind of going back to these old. You know these, uh, I should say, old projects, and being like, "Huh, that was interesting." What I was thinking then, you know, because 
as, as someone who creates stuff and looks back at it occasionally, I'm like, what was I doing there? Or, wow, that was a really good idea. I should, I should do that more. <laughs> <laughs> those things, both of those things definitely happen. Um, and one hand, it's always great to think, oh, I'm better than I was, right? Our team is right. better, we're improving. Um, and, you know, being able to, like I said, listen to the players, but also we had come out with the Cypher System rulebook, which is sort of the agnostic setting, setting agnostic yeah. um, thing. We learned a lot doing that about how, um, how you could break the setting away from the rules. And so we used some of those and, you know, we included things like like player intrusions, which was the thing mm -hmm. that players have been asking yeah. for. We were able to, we were able to, you know, I mean, it, it's almost like we got to have a five-year play test uh, right, yeah. and, and watch watch the games being played, which is something that people just don't get ever anymore because of the, the pace. Um, yeah. So it was like we were able to see five years of play tests and go, okay, well, here are some things that we think we can improve on. Right, and yeah. Yeah, I, I, there's just something awesome about that. And especially with a team, you know, with Monty and Bruce and Sean sort of as part of our creative team, like they're just so creative and they have they come from such varied backgrounds. They've done a lot of different work. And so you sit in a room with these four minds kind of just buzzing. And I, I just find that so fun. It's like, let's do these wild and crazy ideas. And then eventually we come to sort of a middle ground that actually is where we want to be. That, well, that's the funny thing to me as well is, is um, I'm used to working with, with creative people. Um, and it's like so many ideas and yeah, sometimes you get creative people together and nothing actually manifests because there's another idea and another idea and another <laughs> idea and everyone's firing off things. And yet you guys seem to create just like so much like stuff. Uh, you know, it's not just a one game line, you know, it, 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 there's a lot of different, it's board games as well, you know, um, stuff that's happening in Monica games, which I think is, you know, uh, one of the things that I find most impressive about you guys is like, wow, these guys are creative, but they get stuff done like accountants <laughs> or lawyers. You know, like <laughs> we have a whole board of secret accountants like doing stuff. <laughs> I think so. That's my. Uh, <laughs> that's my I really we just and have a of, team of people. Oh, yeah. sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no go ahead. I, I was just going to say that, like, you know, we have the kind of people at our company who you really have to sort of be like please take time off right like they're just so yeah. dedicated and passionate that like the hardest thing is being like please please go away for a week and do something fun um <laughs> and that's awesome because it it yeah. does mean that we can do a lot and i think the other key for us is that you know if we're gonna do like a kickstarter or something like monty as our creative director will come to us and say what are you guys excited about what do you want to make and so that allows us to do passion projects and, and include yeah. a lot more variety. It's never like, these are the things you have to make. We're going to keep following. We're going to put out something every month that's sort yeah. of the same as we put out last month. Uh, we just don't really do that philosophy. Yeah. Um, something that, um, you know, the, the production cycle is something that's interesting as well. Something that I, you know, keep keep an eye on basically from, from different game publishers that I, I play games from. And uh, that's something that I like is that with other games, I will see, oh, that's that, you know, a module or adventure reprinted back from 3.5 oh, uh, or any other system game by into this edition, you know. Um, and something that I like is that, you know, you, you guys are writing, there's like you know, novels uh, or short stories and, and, and fiction stuff going on as well as just like the role playing game. So um, you get to do quite a variety, which must be fun as well. It, it actually, I think. I think it's really important for creativity to not be churning out the same thing because you know, in order to grow as a creative person, I feel like you need new challenges and you need to work in different mediums and bring them together and see kind of what happens. And so I think doing short stories and fiction and kids games and adult games and, you know, Cypher System and Invisible Sun, which isn't really Cypher System, it uses a D10, it's yeah. totally different. I think that actually there's something that happens there when you stretch your creativity in that way. Um, and I find that if I if I just have to write the same type of thing over and over, I kind of get a little stayed, right? I get a little bored, yeah. um, my work suffers. And so, yeah, I'm really grateful that we aren't, that we don't work like that. Just because for me as a creative person, I don't find that to be, just, it's not as engaging. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, we were uh, actually talking beforehand about um, uh, the Twitch stuff, which is like a, a totally different medium for you guys <laughs> to be working in, because it's like you know, you when you write stuff, you 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 write it, you're in your own space, you show it to other people, and then you reveal it, and then you wait to hear back. Um, <laughs> right. Twitch Twitch streaming is like walking into a room full of people uh, watching you, and you know maybe they tell you your shit, maybe you know they love you. Like it's it's a <laughs> it's scary so door true. to open, right? <laughs> 
It is, it really is. Um, yeah, and we, and none of us really knew what we were doing and like everyone just stepped up and learned as fast as they could. And, you know, I, I'm super happy with the end result, but there's this moment where you get, you know, you take all this time and, and you, you prep all these things. And then suddenly you have, you know, four players, a GM and an audio video yeah. person in the room. And you, you're just like, oh, How okay. Do we <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> right. So there's a moment where like you just you understand how deep you are <laughs> and that you don't know if you have the tools to get out of it. And I kind of yeah. love that moment creatively because it, it, it does force you to just be like, all right, well, let's give this a shot and see what happens. Absolutely. I mean, um, it's it's funny because that is reminiscent of how I ended up streaming as well. A couple of friends and we're like, oh, it's going to start streaming. And then, you know, boom, uh, you look and everything has started to happen. There are, you know, audio engineers and servers and cameras pointing at you. Know, oh, my God. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's been a challenge, but you're saying the challenges are what, you know, keep you keep you creative. Has it been something that you, you know, you guys have been enjoying? Yeah, we really like the chance to interact with fans because, like you said, when you write a thing, you you know you put it out in the world, and then you hear back right. in a year when they play the game. Or and so the fact that we can, particularly something like the Invisible Sun one we did, where we filmed it ahead of time, and now we get to sit and chat and just chat with people while we watch it is actually real. I really enjoy that part because um, you know people are passionate and they get excited and they and they say funny things, and you you never get to experience mm -hmm. that. With, with players like it's right. just not it doesn't have I mean occasionally at like a, a convention but it's only five and like in chat you can have like 40 people talking and having right, this right. amazing experience which I'm sure is happening in chat right now <laughs> I can't see oh, it yeah. but hopefully it's good um, and, <laughs> and there's just something awesome about that moment where you realize that you're just sitting among these group of people who love the same things you love and are excited by them and I it's like it's like the reason I do what I do right it's, it's mm. for those moments Absolutely. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. Got, I got a chat link. Beware, everybody. I'm coming in. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to come chat with us, she's coming in. Look out. <laughs> everybody ever <laughs> best behave themselves. Yeah, um, I, I yeah, completely understand. It. It's um, it's it's a little bit like acting, I found it, from from small experiences I've had in uh, you know, theater and stuff like that. It's a bit like taking to a stage, uh, scary and nervous, but something that is um, in its own way has its own energy that, that keeps you keeps you going. Um, so you've got the, the cool. Invisible Sun stuff, which you guys record beforehand, and then uh, you've got some other streams uh, with players not from the Monty Cook uh, Games team. Right. Uh, and Darcy runs some uh, streams as well, if I... Yeah, Darcy just finished remember. running a Numenera game for us, which is really fun. And I'm sure was... Like, I was thinking about this after the fact that she is running the game for the four people who made it. And, like, it wasn't until that was over that I thought, huh, I wonder if that was intimidating. <laughs> like, <laughs> but she did a great job, and we had a blast. Um, it was super fun. And then Monty's going to run a Numenera game for us starting, I think, in a week or two. So, um, and, it, and really, honestly, like, we're so busy as a team that mm -hmm. doing Twitch is, a, is such a fun chance to actually play our games with the right, people that yeah. we made them with. And that's, ah, that's just, like... I wish we could do uh, what that's really what I want to do all day, right? But, yeah. but we don't get to do that. So we schedule a Twitch thing to force us to have time to play. Yeah, and I think you're saying it's really nice as well because a lot of the time creators are, uh, of games are like these sort of slightly nebulous figures whose names you might know. Um, and you're like, oh, yes, you know, that person, I've seen their name in, the, you know, in this book a couple of times, uh, but you don't actually know who they are and put faces to names. Um, and I think that's something that's really nice about you know actually being able to see the people who created the game and see how they play it as well. So f you know for audiences to see how you guys you know, interact with each other as well. Um, uh, whenever I do stuff with some other creators, you know there's a running show. We all actually hate each other off screen, um, <laughs> and, and you know we just turn up to, to work together. So it's, I think it's nice to see groups of creative people enjoying the creative things that they've made. Yeah, so, I think uh, that's there's so much. There's so much camaraderie that happens that you then bring back to the game design part, I think. You know, there's this sense of, of characters that you've made together, places that you discover, and then they end up in books. And, you know, so people who watch, like, the, our Invisible Sun Twitch game will eventually see some of these cool things that we made up on the spot show up in future Invisible Sun books. And I think that's really cool, yeah. too. It's like you get, like, Easter eggs that no one else gets. Yeah, absolutely. That's super cool. Um... <laughs> yes, thank you guys for the birthday wishes. I appreciate it. Um, 
So let's, let's talk about No Thank You Evil, because um, I actually I went back and I watched our video from two years ago, as painful as it was to see a uh, uh, <laughs> beardless self um, <laughs> ask, asking questions to you. Um, <laughs> we did talk a little bit about it, and that was when I think No Thank You Evil had just got its um, uh, Golden Annie Award for the yeah. best family game in 2016. Um, do you want to talk to us a little bit about you know what No Thank You Evil is? Sure. So um, No Thank You Evil is a game that actually came out of the idea from the name first. Uh, the one of the uh, couples that works with us, uh, Tammy and Charles, their daughter was in this play school for they he worked at Dungeons and Dragons at the time. Was in this play school where they were teaching kids to try to be polite, and so rather than scream no, they were trying to teach them to say no thank you. But of course they were just screaming no thank you because they're kids. Um, and so they were in a store, and there was a, the original X Men movie was on TV, and he was, and his daughter was like, "Dad, what is that?" And so he was like, "How do I explain this?" And finally, he was like, "They're fighting evil," because it's the shortest, sort of pithiest answer. And so in the store, she just screamed, "No, thank you, evil!" And so <laughs> the first time that we heard that story, Machi was like, "That would make an amazing title for a kids' game." And of course, at that point, we had we weren't thinking about making a kids' game, right, but it right. just kind of stuck with me. Um, and then we started hearing a lot of Numenera players who were playing Numenera with their kids. And for them, that meant scaling the difficulties down um, mm. and, and changing the setting. Because Numenera is a little bit dark. It's a little bit adult. And sure, so they, yeah. were, they were putting Santa Claus in Numenera and, and all these amazing things. And we thought, you know, we could help them. Make, we could help facilitate that. Um, right, and right. so that's kind of how it was born. Um, and then we, so it's a game, it's for families. It's designed so you can play with a five-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a 10-year-old. So it's got scales. Um, and then also we worked really hard to make it good for kids who are on the autism spectrum or who, mm -hmm. um, you know, have color blindness and, and things like that. So we did a lot with fonts and colors and, um, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to be able to speak well to play. You can, you can move or act or draw. Uh, so we really wanted to make it just something that was really accessible and really fun and not sort of get bogged down in rules. You right. know, you can yeah, throw your yeah. ice cream at the creature, you can throw your pizza at the creature or like, uh, it's just kind of fun, <laughs> like, which is really our goal. Yeah, yeah, and that's definitely. Um, I mean, time that the the genre misses, we hit a lot of dark notes, uh, especially in our. <laughs> yeah, it's twenty eighteen. I mean, like every note is some right. level of dark. Right. Uh, so you're like, please, so please let me play the princess and the ponies and the. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, you must go to the castle. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, <laughs> I understand. Um, so, so you did the first run in 2016, right? Um, that seems and now right. This, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and then this is the the second the second time that it's come to Kickstarter. Yeah, we we sold out sort of unexpectedly. Um, it mm. it did win the Origins Award last year, I think, for uh, best role playing game of the year. Like, so that mm. was so that probably gave us a little bit of a boost, and that was really exciting. And then um, we just suddenly were like. These are selling out, and you know we wanted. We knew eventually we would have to reprint the game, but we had no idea it would be so quick. And so, because Kickstarter is our business model, and we can get it to backers a lot faster because we can we can send it off for a reprint as soon as the Kickstarter is over, and we don't have to wait. And so, right. you know, it was just sort of this sudden like, hey, we should we should we should reprint this. We should do a Kickstarter because um, we mm -hmm. didn't want people to sort of go without. So. Uh, we just sort of launched that a couple of weeks ago. It's got I think four or five days left. It's getting really close. Um, yeah, and it's. I feel like I love No Thank You Evil Kickstarters because they're like these awesome little baby Kickstarters at, for us that 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 are mostly about interacting with families, and you get to hear mm. all these stories about families playing <laughs> with their kids, and they start sending us these amazing photos and this artwork, and I don't know, mm. this is like my favorite Kickstarter to, <laughs> to run. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. You're definitely like, yeah, you're right. You're definitely hitting a different group of people to you know the normal tabletop audience, which is which is nice. I mean, like, you know, you, you, yeah. it's families and you know kids as well interacting with it, which is really nice because a lot of the role playing uh, community. I mean, I can look at my stats, and it is you know people who are uh, adults. You know, uh, kids right. kids aren't really on Twitch. You know, like or kids aren't really playing so much D and D. More and more so, they are. <laughs> Um, but you know, no thank you evil. Um, that that must be nice to get to interact with fans and families and and, and kids, which is I imagine cool. a, a therapeutic <laughs> a therapeutic experience. <laughs> it is pretty cool. I mean, like I think about how important my first RPG was, and every once in a while I have these moments where I'm like, oh my gosh, these, these you know, in 
in 10 years, these teenagers are going to be talking about their first RPG and it's going to be No Thank You Evil. And I don't know, there's something yeah. <laughs> there's something that's pretty awesome about that for me. I really, I don't know, I, I, it, it makes me nostalgic for my own sort of early RPG mm. days, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on, the, on the contrary, I remember uh, growing up in bleak Essex, England, and the first role-playing game being Warhammer uh, with... <laughs> with, with mud and blood and everything yeah but yes i think that would have been a nicer experience <laughs> mud and blood and math <laughs> yeah yes uh, the triumvirate of pain um so <laughs> did, did it <laughs> i'm enjoying that did, did anything change from uh from one to you know to, to two the reprint you've got some new stuff there's a i think the 15 dollar option has got some some extra additional bits um yeah so yeah, so nothing's changed in the game at all. It's just a straight up reprint, same thing, because uh, everything that we've heard from players is that it's all working. So, uh, right. you know, if, if if we heard from families that something wasn't working, we would have changed it, but that's not what we heard. And then the the B mail is the $15, and that's for families that already have it. We've had a lot of people mm -hmm. ask for extra adventures because, you know, it's hard to make adventures, and especially for kids, and it's time consuming. And so right, these yeah. are adventures that come to your inbox and they're sent from Woodland, who's like the queen bee in Storia. And so she's like, they're very voicey and, and they engage the kids to come and help her. Um, and so it, it becomes a sort of email exchange that kicks off uh, adventures. And so yes. we wanted to give the you know people something that was inexpensive that they could continue to play, uh, you know, with their kids with, that didn't require a long wait time like a print book would. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um... So, so what what is one of the challenges then in translating from you know adult tabletop and Numenera to mm -hmm. you know converting that to to being workable for kids? You know, because there's a lot of you know challenges there, and you mentioned the accessibility as well, which is you know something that you have to to write in to uh, make that easy for people. Yeah, we you know we looked at a lot of the kids' games that were out there, from board games to there's a few great uh, RPGs out there already for kids, um, and and we looked at adult games, and we just sort of ran the gamut of games. We spent a lot of time in toy stores, which was really fun, um, and so we started just really exploring games, and we talked to uh, you know we looked at studies about dyslexia and about um, you know color blindness and about the autism spectrum and what that what that meant for kids. And, you know, so we, we worked really hard around those things. And then of course we had to, we had to come up with a game that didn't, that didn't bore kids and that didn't require a lot of math mm. or a lot of writing. Cause of course, you know, that feels like school all of a sudden and, yeah. and there are easier things to do. Um, and so every time we made a game design choice, I said, all right, if there's a puppy in the room and this game, can we keep the, can we keep the kid engaged in the game or is he right, going to go right. to the puppy? And so like, yeah. that was sort of our, our, you know, you can, you can play, replace puppy with video game or anything else, right? Pizza. Um, right, and so right. our, our goal was to keep it short and tight and engaging enough that the kids wanted to play because it, we didn't want it to be a chore and we didn't want it to be a chore for the parent. Um, right. So there's a lot of like, there's some like Easter eggs in, in the writing for adults that like kids are totally not going to get, but that hopefully are making it more engaging for parents right, right. Or, or adults to run. Um, yeah. And we also, you know, we, we just sort of looked at like, how, you know, how tactile do kids want to be? And so we made really tactile, uh, you know, tokens mm. and, and yeah, things yeah. with soft edges, you know, kids with autism or, or sensory issues don't like hard edges, don't like, you know, weird mm. textures. And so we worked hard to make sure that the pieces we were printing were fun to, to, to sort of touch and hold. Right. Yeah, uh, so yeah. there's like all kinds of, there were all kinds of things that we, we tried to do our best. And of course, the research out there is like this font is good for dyslexia. No, this font is good to no, this yes, font is horrible. Right, yeah. And we were just like, okay, <laughs> like, no, we're not going to get the best font because there clearly is not one. So we sort of right. were just like, we stay away from these things that are clearly not working. So right. it was actually quite a challenge. Yeah, yeah, it's that's awesome. I mean, I think it's definitely something that we uh, I'd hope to see in, you know, um, maybe on not such a scale, but you know, more accessibility options for role playing games in the future in general. Um, because yeah. it seems so so important, you know, um, and something which I think has been quite overlooked. Maybe because it's been coming from a design perspective where it's like, well, forty year old neckbeard dudes in their basement play these games, you know, like if you can't read it then fine. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, I have to say as, as someone who's in my forties, I am starting to could you make me just a little bit better? <laughs> <laughs> so so that changes our design right we're like right. We, our font is a little bit bigger in adult core books than it would be if we were 22 and making them <laughs> <laughs> right. 
my goodness. So, um, <laughs> so you, you've got you've been playtesting, you've been writing them for these these guides. Um, so, what's been your experience for you know watching kids not only like play with each other, but you know DM or uh, you know GM for for one another, which is something that I think is super interesting. It is really interesting. I find that kids are so creative. And so for as an adult, sometimes I feel overwhelmed in a really good way by their creativity. So like I'm adult, you know, when I'm running a game for kids, suddenly they're just so off the rails, like more than any adults I've ever jammed for. And you're just like, all right, let's go that way. Um, and I feel like adult like kid GMs kind of get that better for other kids. And so like they're uh, off the rails for a kid GM isn't really off the rails because that's kind of mm. where their mind's going to. And so, um, so, and you can watch kids figure out how to tell a story the more they do it, which is really interesting. Cause at first it's like, they're just trying to like, you know, they don't really know what they're doing. They're trying to keep all the pieces parts together. But then like the second or third time they're starting to understand things like pacing and, and moving the story along and keeping the characters engaged. And, and those were things I didn't learn until I, well, I don't even know if yeah. I have them now, but like, you know, I mean, learning those things at 10 years old is amazing. And I think yeah, about what yeah. they're gonna, you know, when, whatever they turn out to be in their lives, they're gonna have this skill set that's really cool. Yeah. yeah, that was something I wanted to touch on as well, actually, you know, like how important it is um, to 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 learn this the skill set that we learn when playing role playing games, which I think you know first and foremost is is social. You know we learn so much about yeah. dealing with with other people and speaking with other people um, uh, through doing so. But you know that's something that most of us haven't experienced until we are you know, maybe eighteen or, or twenty one. Whenever you go to college or maybe you find your first your first game there, um, you know I, I, that's not something I've gotten to see myself. But that sounds like it would be really um, uh, interesting to experience how how kids and and younger people um, develop. I guess you have seen a bit of a chance to see them develop from 2016 to 2018 as well. So that must be nice. Yeah, it is really nice. Um, and we're we're also getting to hear stories. Like there's a lot of um, organizations and counselors and and groups that are using No Thank You Evil uh, for things like grief counseling or trauma. And and the stories that they're telling us about watching kids. You know, sort of just open up yeah. and be able to, to to come to terms with their story through the character, right through the safety of of character mm -hmm. and fiction. I think, I mean, holy cow! If I had that had that as a kid, like that would have just been amazing. And so, knowing that we're like helping helping kids learn skills, but also, you know, something bigger, something bigger than that, sometimes is yeah, I, it kind of overwhelms me a little bit. I don't really have any words for for how amazing that feels. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I saw a an article, this must be earlier, maybe even last year, it was on the BBC, and they were saying that uh, role-playing games were being used for um, uh, like troubled kids or uh, kids who, who aren't having a good time in school, that kind of thing. And that kind of struck me as like, huh, that's that's some of the first like actually really positive media, particularly <laughs> like, about role-playing games in a, in a little while. Long overdue. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's that's really nice to hear that. Um, no, thank you. You've always having that kind of um, that effect and uh, and impact upon kids. Um, on that on that note, you know, no, thank you, evil. And as a whole, Monty Cook Games strike me as a a, a positive force in the, in the tabletop space right now. And I think we're. Um, I think over the past few years, I've noticed that there's been a, a, a big trend not only in accessibility but inclusivity from all different different types of people. Um, how important to you guys is that in your, you know, design uh, methodology? That could be the word it's <laughs> <part> for. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's super. I, I think that we are a company that that is is always heart forward, and you know, we have a, a diverse company. Um, you know, half of our company is women, which is unusual. Half of our, not quite half of our company company is is not heterosexual, which is also unusual. Um, and so I think yeah. that like these are like these are things that are important to us both on like a personal and like a bigger world level right um and so you know i think that we i think it's hard to do progress perfectly but i think we work really really hard at it like sometimes the things that mm -hmm. our team comes up with to make sure that people feel safe and welcome and inclusive just makes me just so happy i mean and that's true for the game the game industry in, in as a whole i think is really moving toward a place where everyone can come to the table, everyone can yeah. feel welcome. And importantly, I think we're teaching 
I, and I, when I say we, I don't mean Monte Cook Games, I mean the industry is, is mm. teaching people how to be welcoming because I think particularly with people like I'm super shy, my social skills are sort of, you know, kind of on the, uh, <laughs> on the edge. I, I worked really hard on them, but like, you know, to be at something like a convention and to think beyond myself to yeah. make someone else feel welcome is a really hard space for me, right? You got to get over the shyness, you have to get over the fear of rejection, you have to, there's yeah. so many steps. And so I think that the more we can teach each other to sort of reach out with an open heart, like at, at, in person is really important too. So it's part game design and part sort of who you are and how you present in the world. Um, yeah. And so, you know, all of our, all of our settings have, you know, No Thank You Evil has kids in wheelchairs and kids with prosthetics and, and kids mm -hmm. who are, you know, you, you can't easily tell from the art what their gender is or where they fall in the gender spectrum because we want people to be represented, right? There's there's people of color um, and, and it just feels so important to me that you can see yourself in art. Um, yeah. And and so even, it's not even the language sometimes, sometimes it's art. And, you know, all of our, all of our stuff has you know, I think a thing we say all the time is we need more women, we need more people of color, you know, mm -hmm. we need more non-heterosexual males in particular because they're just sort of the norm and we want to push the boundary and represent the world larger. So um, so that very long-winded <laughs> explanation no. is that it's super important to us. Um, and, yes. you know, we work really hard at it. Yes, all the yeses. <laughs> that's, that's great. Yeah, and like, talk um, after yeah, you guys, so you have to <laughs> forgive good. me. <laughs> no, 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 it's all good. Um, I, it's funny you should mention the, the art stuff, actually. We did, and this is, um, yes, this is, uh, Mitch is in chat, is reminding me of this as well, but this is 2015, 2016, um, and we did a, um, uh, not so much a poll, uh, we did a look through all of the, the core uh, role-playing game books, and we, we put together a chart of what um, representation of uh, male, female, or you couldn't tell what gender person was. Uh, and Monica Games had the best um, uh, spread of that. I think it was like almost a clear 30-30-30, um, which was That's not the same in, in a lot of other, a lot of other uh, rule books, because it is, like you I say, was... just the norm to have. Yeah, it was Go really, ahead. I thought it was super cool that you guys did that. And I was really happy to see that, that so many companies had like good representation. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and I think our 30-30 split was sort of accidental. We just kind of tried to, to be sort of roundabout right, yeah. in that area. But like, but it was so great to see that like, I, I mean, if you had done that poll five years before that, I don't think those numbers would have been that good. So that's really, yeah. I think that's really cool. It would be interesting to, to do it again and see like who's, you know, who's doing that? Like I was just working yeah. for, um, I just worked for Eloy LaSanta, uh, Third Eye Games. They have a part-time gods thing coming out that's super cool. And like mm -hmm. all of his artists are making these amazing characters that are just really different and really outside the box. And I just loved, I mean, the art was part of the reason that I was just like, yes, I want to work on this project. Um, all right. There's just, just great small companies out there doing amazing stuff in that regard, I think. Yeah, and I think yeah, places like Kickstarter are, are where we've seen, you know, that space been able to, to happen for, for individual, you know, indie pubs um, and I like because I think, you know, 10 years ago you are looking at major labels printing stuff and that's pretty much it, you know, so there's, there's yeah. a, a nice bit of, of diversity in what you, you can get your hands on these days, um, which which can only be good, right, you know, the more different stuff you can get out there, I think, is only, is only positive. Uh, so... Inspirations. Let's talk about that for No Thank You Evil, because this is something um, that is, you know, you say you're inspired by the artwork of uh, uh, another project, and the artwork itself for um, No Thank You Evil is uh, pretty awesome. Um, but also, uh, aside from, you know, the, that moment where like, the girl screamed, No Thank You Evil, um, are there any other, you know, uh, board games, books, movies, you know, those kind of things that were your main inspiration when, uh, when creating yeah. it? Oh my gosh, yes. Um, I'm a huge fairy tale fan, so there, there's all kinds of cool fairy tale stuff that I've stolen. Um, and, you know, I, you guys probably know that I love dinosaurs, so there's some dinosaurs in there because I don't know mm. that I've ever written anything that doesn't have dinosaurs. <laughs> um, also, like, I watched a lot of really fun and cool, interesting kids stuff. Like, uh, Over the Garden Wall was this the one that I loved. And there was this great, there's this great Spanish movie about a dragon made of, like, pots and pans whose name I can't remember but it's lovely um mm -hmm. so I watched a lot of kids films for a little while there um <laughs> you'll notice a lot of puns wordplay whether it's for adults or kids is kind of a thing that I just 
I just sort of love, I'm kind of a geek that way. Uh, and for a while there, while I was working on No Thank You Evil, I was talking in puns and rhymes so much that some, you know, people had to be like, stop doing that. Like, I can't <laughs> help it. I don't know why it's coming out. Um, so like all those kinds of things and kids books, I mean, I just, you know, for a sh the shy sort of introverted, not very socially adept kid that I was, like books were really, really, really important to me and stories were really important. And so I think I've just carried those with me for 45 years waiting for a place to put them. And I feel like when we decided to do you know, Thank You Eva, I just kind of opened that floodgate of like, mm -hmm. here are things that I love. Um, and so there's like a lot of science and there's ghosts because like scary ghost stories right, when I was a right. kid were like, uh, or, or horror comics. I don't know if you like if you've read those, but like my dad's mm -hmm. horror comic collection was a big deal. And so like, I, you know, we had to find it under the bed, kind of scary right. space. So I feel like I'm kind of a magpie. I just, I steal from everything, you know, yeah. music and movies and TV and other games and then I just smush them all together and, and kind of see what comes out. Yeah, yeah, that's the best way. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, people in chat are mentioning uh, predation uh, for dinosaurs. Oh yeah, um, yeah, which, <laughs> which, <laughs> which I think was just, I don't, I don't think it had come out when last we talked, but we definitely talked about wow. dinosaurs last time, which is always, always good to talk about dinosaurs. Um, <laughs> let's let's, uh, let's let the, the chat ask some questions, shall we? Uh, so, <laughs> if you guys have any uh, questions, you can you can at me in the chat. You can at Encounter Roleplay, and they'll pop up nice and red, and I can see them and ask some questions. Um, Genli had asked, when you say that No Thank You Evil is good for every age, uh, how about a group of kids with different ages? So, if you've got you know uh, ten, eleven year old kids playing with six, five year old kids who are kind of different, you know, uh, levels. Uh, yeah, you know, we actually, that was one of the hardest things for us to come up with because we decided we wanted to call it a family game. And we realized very quickly that a family does not consist of three five-year-olds. It right, consists yeah, of a, yeah. a three and a half-year-old who wants to play with the five, seven, and nine-year-old. Um, so yeah, we. so what we did with that is we came up with a system where, uh, if you're familiar at all with the cipher system, you have a sentence, I'm a blank, blank, who blanks. And so the way that we did this is for the for the sort of three and a half to six year old ish, right? You know, age ranges are are all over the board for kids with skill levels. Um, you just play. I'm a blank. So I'm a spy. I'm an astronaut. I'm a scientist. Right. And then as you go up, you play. I'm a blank who blanks. Um, so you're or I'm a blank blank. So you're I'm a right. I'm a fast spy. I'm a smart astronaut. Whatever you want to play. And then by the time you're up to like nine or 10, you can play that I'm a blank blank who blanks. Um, and so you can be a smart spy who does it, you know, who, who throws ice cream, who loves ice cream. Um, and so each level gets a different level of complexity and you can all play together. So it doesn't affect anything other than the, the higher it goes, the more choices you get. And so one of the things that we found was giving kids lots of choices at a younger age got really overwhelming very quickly. And they felt they weren't having fun. They actually felt sort of right. traumatized by having to decide. Um, and so we basically just sort of narrowed in their choices to like, do you want to play the yes token? Right, play right. the yes token. Um, and then it goes, it sort of goes up. and. Uh, that same is true that everyone gets a companion and their companion at first is just like bring your stuffed animal to the table you've got a companion right, yay right. Um, and then as it goes on your companion can start to do things and so the reason that we did that is because we wanted everyone to be able to play together and also this allows the older kids to help the younger kids because they've mm -hmm. already got they've already gotten through that right so they know that that kind of how it works uh, so we worked right. really hard to make it various ages um, and you get you get three different uh, character sheets, uh, so they all have different complexities as well. So the super simple character sheet is like you mostly just scribble in your character what yeah. your character and companion look like, and you're good to go. Um, so yeah, we we worked really hard to make that to make that work. And so far, it seems to you know we have we mm -hmm. uh, sort of we put five on the box. We've heard stories of like four and a half playing. Once they get to three and a half, they tend to just right. want to sort of eat the dice. Like they're you know. <laughs> <laughs> There's some limits there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, no, that sounds like a, a good answer to that question. Play with everyone. <laughs> I like that, you know, that, that like free tiers level of uh, uh, design there. That makes a lot of sense. And um, something that I love about the, the cyber system as well um, is that I'm a blank, blank who blanks. Um, and that makes, that makes sense that it's headed over in a, a version to No Thank You Evil. I have to say, I haven't got a chance to play it, but I've actually got a, uh, a cousin who's coming up on five years old now, so um, 
yeah, about about the good age to start getting into that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure you get this question a lot uh, because whenever I have designers on here who do stuff that is cool, uh, people ask, "How can I do cool stuff too?" Um, which is pretty much what Sal was asked: is um, any tips for people entering the industry as game designers or authors? Everyone wants to be you. How do they be you? <laughs> Somebody, you can be me for a day if you're willing to do the, my work. That's that's my rule. Um, <laughs> please come and be me for a day. It's really what I want to say. Um, that's a great question, and I think that it depends. It really depends on what you want to do. So. Um, there are great opportunities to, to try your hand at game design. Um, we have a Cypher system creator where you can go and you can use up the Cypher system it, through drive through and make your own game um, and you put it up and, and we supply art that you can use and some people have just done amazing things with it. Um, and lots of publishers have this. I think Paizo has one. I know, uh, I think, I don't want to say I know because I'm not 100% sure. I think Wizards has something for D&D mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, and then, so that's a great way to get started. And then also lots of companies have uh, like contests, like Paizo has a contest every year uh, where you can submit and, and you know, even if you don't win, you often might become a freelancer for them. Cause I think they, yeah. I've had, I've heard stories of people who've gotten pulled out of that pool for freelancing. Yeah. Um, and so like, and you know, doing doing something on drive through that you just do on your own and getting feedback is all, those are all great ways. Um, I, a lot of people offer internships. We offer an internship for college students, um, but it, ours is paid, but it is only for college students. But I think a lot of other companies might have something. Um, we did hire our last intern. She now works for us as, as in the graphic design stuff and makes these really, works with our artists to make beautiful books and, and cool awesome. supplements and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so for the for the game design, those are my sort of recommendations. Uh, on the author side, I think if you want to write fiction, I don't know if this is where mm -hmm. the question is going, so I'll answer it just quickly. Um, I think submitting to anthologies and short fiction pieces are a great way to get started. They require less commitment. Uh, sort of starting to publish novels and stuff as a whole. Could, could, yeah, I could talk about that for like a whole hour and still not right. uh, have lots of information on it. Um, but if you're interested in short fiction, I think that they you know so finding out who's publishing anthologies, submitting to those, that kind of stuff is a great way to go. Um, you know, as always, play testing your work and and or having like a critique group that will help you. I mean, I have we have great play testers. I still have a writer's critique group that looks at everything that I write before I send it out. That's that's kind of the key, I think, to getting better. Absolutely, yeah. Um, one other group that I know does stuff is uh, Cobalt Press. I think do a year the yes. um, uh, application where you can you can get writing stuff into there. And I know that yeah, Dan they have Dylan, a name for that. Yes, I I, I don't remember either. It's it's, <laughs> it's so late. It's a thing. They definitely do it. Go to their website. They also and, and they're great people. Yeah. Cobalt Press is great oh, people. So. Absolutely, yes. Um, they sponsor the show. We love Cobalt Press. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. God, I didn't say they're jerks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <those guys>. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're all lovely. Um, let's see. Uh, any updates to when v Invisible Sun will be hitting stores? Also, thank you to Shanna and the Monty's Good Game fam for all your amazing work and unique creativity from Demon Blades. Oh, that's so sweet. Um, we know that the original shipment, which goes to backers, because backers get there first, is in California or off the coast of California. And so that mm -hmm. should be happening very soon. And then I do believe, so the box is so big and has so much stuff in it that our printer was having a little bit of trouble wrapping it mm -hmm. to the point where it would stay closed and properly <laughs> protected. Um, so that was, <laughs> so we've, we've had a few delays in making this monstrosity of a box that no one else has ever tried before. So that's the most recent, uh, they fixed that. Uh, so it, it, it's coming, um, mm -hmm. but we don't have any more specifics. Like it, once things get on a ship and, and hit the ocean, like they're like, you know, right, it's sort right. of like the Bermuda Triangle of games out there. You just never know where your where your games are. But um, but we are we are hoping for soon. <laughs> That's not very helpful. Sorry. I'm gonna grill you some more. No. Um, <laughs> where where are the books? Yeah. No. Um, I'm sure I'm sure they're on their way. Um, but yeah, I, I'm familiar with the the process of things being somewhere in an ocean on their way, and then somewhere in a depot being checked so uh yeah, yeah. it's a thing custom um custom yeah. stuff to hold up too oh yeah yeah um uh, max sterling asks uh what would be the best numenera books or sets to pick up for a gm the last thing i bought 
uh, from Monty Cook was a Planescape module from second edition. Uh, <laughs> Welcome so, to the new old. world. <laughs> yeah, I'm the new age. <laughs> um, so let's see. So we uh, we are coming out with new core books uh, that we are you can pre-order right now. They'll be out later this summer. Um, but if you if you want to start small, I would say start with the PDF of the original Numenera core book. I think it's it's twenty ish something dollars. It's not very expensive, um, and you can kind of look at everything and see if it's for you. Um, but you you know the the like I said the new core books are backwards compatible even with the right. old core books so you can have them both at the table they all work it doesn't matter uh, but I would say start with the core book that's the best place um, if you played Torment Tides of Numenera the computer game that we have a supplement uh, that that ties into that that's kind of fun um, and so if you're interested in that story and that part of the world that's a cool combination um, but really you could pick up the the cheap Numenera PDF and and just run with it. Nice. Yeah. Do, am I right in thinking you guys have a starter set, or am I thinking of something else? We do. We do have a starter yeah, set. Yeah. That's a really good one, yeah. actually. I totally yeah. forgot we had a starter set. <laughs> <laughs> she did not let me out in public. Shana, go talk about our things. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we do. We came up with a starter set, oh, which is also a great way because you get like character sheets and right. and and the books and. Uh, part of it is aesthetic. Like, what do you like? Because the starter set has the books broken down into four books so mm -hmm. that you can only take what you need if you don't want to carry a giant 416-page hardcover around with you. Um, and it, and so the starter set is a great way to start. It's got really cool elements and um, comes in a beautiful little box and all that good stuff. Thank you for being my salesperson. No, I, <laughs> I am sure I sent them to about a week ago, and I was panicking. I was like, did I send them something that... That's totally I'm different game. So, yeah, good. <laughs> I'm sure that our our marketing crew who is watching this, hi guys, is shaking their head, <laughs> <laughs> sweating <laughs> right now. Why do we oh, let God. the designers out of the basement? What are they doing out there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the the army of lawyers and accountants are uh, furiously <laughs> emailing you to speak. Uh, let's see. So, My Slack notifications are blowing yeah. up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Jay Everett asks, Shanna, uh, I haven't seen anything on the interwebs, but is there a chance you or other MC MCG people uh, coming out to the Midwest or East Coast? I'd love to get some book signs and pick your brains for a bit in person. Uh, any any conventions or bits Ooh. that you guys are up to? Uh... Let's see. We have, um, we have Gen Con coming up, uh, which is in Indianapolis. We have a Dragon Con, which is in Atlanta. We have Game Hole Con, which I, th I think is in Madison. I hope that's right. Uh, I've been before and it's lovely, but I totally just forgot the city. Um, mm. What else do we have? I think that might be it for super, super recent. Gen Con and Dragon Con in chat from Game Hole Con. Did we mention that oh, one? Yes, Game Hole Con. Yep. Okay, which is Darcy will be fun a big bad con. I'm getting all the lines here. This is great. This oh, good, 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 good. <laughs> um, and Amazing. we usually have someone at like PAX West, but that's the same time as Dragon Con. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know who will be there this year, but I will be at Dragon Con, sweating in cool. the Atlanta summer sun. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you guys aren't coming to uh, to Toronto, Canada, anytime soon, right? Me and <laughs> me and Mitch I wish. Are gonna <laughs> That'd be nice. Should get yeah, a convention to invite us. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I'll, I don't know if there are any, but I'm sure there's something. Um, Let's start one. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll start one. Damn it. Um, <laughs> uh, Demon Blades asked, uh, with Numenera Destiny and Discovery coming out soon, will the game master sheets you obtain on the store be updated to complement the new rules? Goodness. Is did you say game master sheets? The game master sheets you obtain on the store be updated. This sounds like an accountant question. It sounds like might... <laughs> I think that uh, <laughs> if you mean the the sort of GM cheat sheets mm -hmm. that you can play with as a GM, yes, we have made new ones with the new rules. They're tucked into the slipcase for Discovery and Destiny, um, and I'm sure that we will put them as PDF eventually as well. I don't think so. One of the great things about the new system is that there the rule changes are are minimal. Like um, the the biggest changes are like players get more options. And we uh, we made some things simpler, and so it, that rule sheet is almost entirely still compatible. Uh, I think we ch we added a thing about crafting because one of the new things we're talking about a lot is like building structures and installations and how to make your town really cool. And so there might we might have added some of that to the new uh, sheet, but the st the old one will still work. 
there you go awesome um on a note of uh, numenera discovery and destiny um uh, mitch asked what your favorite new location is and he's been bugging me to ask you this for about 10 years <laughs> <laughs> Should I give him the one for each year? <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, so, oh, there's so many. Um, <laughs> so one of the things that makes me really happy, this is a sideways answer to your question, but it's the first thing that came up is, is so I wrote this novel called The Poison Eater, and it has a city called mm -hmm. Enthate in it. And Enthate is now in Numenera Destiny, so you can play in the city that the novel is set in. It's just not really a new one, but it makes me super happy to like open it up and see the poison eater and the map and and that kind of stuff in there. So that's one that I'm really excited about. Um, there's also some some I don't want to give anything away either. Uh, there there are, <laughs> <laughs> ah uh, there are some really cool cities that are built uh, like on the backs of things or in really weird cool locations that I'm <laughs> I think would be so much fun to play in. Um, <laughs> this is my favorite like, thing about engineering people who can't <laughs> answer the questions that are asked. Me, is uh, I, had, uh, um, <laughs> I, I had Chris Perkins on um, the show la last year, uh, and there was someone over there watching him at shaking his head, saying, no, "Don't say that." <laughs> <No? laughs> they, my team is sad that they didn't send that person with me tonight. Um, <laughs> yeah. So. so <laughs> So one of the things that's really cool is there are um, there are these starter communities now in in the books, and so basically they're places where you and your team, your crew, your your mates, whatever, whoever you're traveling with, your enemies, I don't know, can go and you can make the place cooler and better and protect it from ho rampaging hordes and set up these cool technologies. And so there's all these sort of starter communities that I. Um, that I'm so excited because I feel like it's one of those things that people are going to put online and you can, you're going to be able to watch them grow. And I think that's going to be right. super fun and cool. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you guys got a lot of stuff happening this year. Is, um, is there anything we should be on the lookout for? I mean, the, the no thank you evil finishes in four days time now, it looks like, um, so, so, close. so what's, what's next, you know, is there anything you can talk about? I mean, I don't want to stress <laughs> out the accountants too much. <laughs> Um, we have we have big plans that I can't yet talk about, uh, which we usually talk about at Gen Con. So uh, you know, there's that. Um, you know, Gen Con's a big thing on our radar right now because we are we're, we're just finishing the adventures. We're gonna have an Invisible Sun adventure, which is not really a thing. Um, Invisible Sun's the kind of game that doesn't actually have adventures, and so the thing that you are going to do is super cool and weird and like nothing you've ever done before. And that's been really fun to work on. Um, and we are, you know, we're working on the follow-up Numenera book. So we just uh, finished building tomorrow, which is just weird, freaky technology. Um, Monty and I just wrote book M for Invisible Sun, which is all about weird, yes. freaky magic. I see a theme <laughs> here. Um, and then, yeah, we have a big thing that we can't, that we can't say. I hate that so much. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, okay. I want to make something up. We're gonna come up with. We're gonna make hot cocoa mugs that you know have dice for marshmallows. How's that? <laughs> hey, do you guys sell mugs? Because this is something that I, I, I've genuinely had a question about before. Uh, is, we do. Is, is it, there are mugs, right? Uh, yeah, there's t-shirts for sure. I've seen. Yeah, you can get them on. Um, um, oh, it just my mind just blanked. Uh, a website. Someone uh, come into the bubble, comments and uh, help us. <laughs> <laughs> it's Darcy's in chat, so she'll help, I'm sure. Uh, okay, good. Guys. Darcy will tell you yes. where to get them because my mind just I totally need blanked on that. I need, yes, I, I need like new Panera and Cypher System. We have no Red thing to water bottles. Yeah, Red Bubble. Thank you. Red thank bubble. you, Darcy. You <laughs> She's so good. <laughs> <laughs> She's like Absolutely, my third yeah. brain, and I love it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, good, good. There are mugs. That is something that's very important uh to me this year so you heard it here first guys uh coco mugs uh coming out at gen con um <laughs> <laughs> but it's something we could talk about i'm sure nearer the time let's sit like three months and until it's gen yeah it's not very long yeah, yeah. um sure i also want to make d20 squeaky toys for dogs why has no one done this yet wouldn't that be that amazing a that's my genius idea kickstart it let's go <laughs> And this is how we get ourselves in trouble. You know what we should make. Accountants sweating again in, in the, the, lawyer, the law firm. Yeah, um, that sounds great. Well, uh, 
like you know two years ago uh we did the interview and then i said to you do you have any uh, questions for me and that's how i ended interviews is there anything you'd like to ask uh it could be <laughs> absolutely anything you know how how do you do your hair that well you know something like that i don't know well, you know, I would ask that, but the layout actually only lets me see the lower half of your face. So, oh, good. like, talk. Let's talk about this new beard thing you got going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's not um, really new, is it? It's <laughs> I, well, I mean, I think I think last we 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 talked, there was the kind of the sproutings. You know, the, the first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm the, a fan. The, I like it. Yeah, the alpha. This is the omega, and um, nice, very well yeah, done. It's, it's, it's happened. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I, actually, you, there, there is a bit of a story to the beard. Um, okay, I want to hear it. I have shaved the beard twice since we last spoke, both times for charity, and both times this beard has has raised two thousand pounds. So it's it's actually an expensive beard, you know. It's, that <laughs> is a good beard. Wow, that almost makes me wish happened. I could grow one. <laughs> I would grow one for charity. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, yeah, yeah, there is there is the beard. Uh, it is my my greatest weapon uh, for streaming. Um, <laughs> everyone just makes fun of me. Honestly, everyone makes fun of me when I don't have a beard, so I have to have one so I look a bit you know a bit more grown up because I do look approximately twelve years old without a beard. Uh, so I don't um, remember that, but I'll I'll take your word for it. <laughs> That's kind. Uh, <laughs> Who are you kind. interviewing next? That's what I want to know too. I have no idea. You know, I do this. Uh, I think I got an email from Darcy uh, like a couple of days ago. I was like, "Do you want to chat, to Shannon?" I was like, "Hell yeah, I do!" So, um, <laughs> so that happened. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. No. I don't know who, who, who's next. Um, I know that I'm going away on a holiday next week, and then things are happening the week after. We're we're, we're doing it's 30, 33 hours of D and D and RPG streams a week at the moment. So it kind of it, it happens. Oh, you know, it it comes as it as it goes. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I had an answer. I look really unprofessional. I need my own lawyers and accountants to tell me. Who <laughs> who you can interview yeah. your mug. It'll be perfect. That's a good, yeah. I have a, I have a mug that like chromas for all my green screen. And so it's nice. like super invisible. It's like an invisible song. That like, is oh. cool. <laughs> all right, now I want to Absolutely. Well, well, is there anything else before we go? Uh, no Thank You Evil is a thing that we're here to talk about mostly, so we should probably link to the, to the Kickstarter. Give us your, you know, your elevator pitch, your, um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, the, <laughs> the truth is, like, this this game, out of all, even more than dinosaurs, uh, this game is sort of the game of my heart. Um, you know, like I said, my first role-playing game was Bunnies and Burrows, and I feel like... The fact that I got to make a role-playing game that is people's first role-playing game, family's first role-playing games. I, some days I feel like a drug dealer. Just come on, just come play a little game. <laughs> but most of the time I feel really good about what I do. <laughs> so, so if you know families, if you know, or, we have a special for organizations and, and churches and schools and counselors. We have a special for them that allows them to get them for a discount. So if you know families or if you know organizations that would benefit from playing role-playing games with their kids, please share the link, pass the word, uh, back us, all that good stuff. Absolutely. You're like, you're, uh, you're a, like a thousand dollars closer since first we started talking. So you guys are wow, going to smash that uh, New back is in chat. There you go. Awesome. Yay. Thank you. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Thank you for joining us. Hopefully, we've helped answer a couple of questions. Love to have you back on the show anytime, Shanna. It's been it's been a pleasure as always. This is super fun. I'm yeah. I'm sad that I didn't actually click over and look at the chat, but I thought I'd be distracted. So whatever you said that was nice and kind and excited and enthusiastic. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's all horrible. Don't look. Oh God. I'm uh, <laughs> You guys have been awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon, for joining us. Thank you, Monica Games, for setting this up. It's been awesome fun. Can't wait to see what you guys are up to next. Keep an eye out for Gen Con. It sounds like for those Coco mugs, and perhaps we'll have another interview closer to the time so we can <laughs> actually talk about that stuff. But I'm going to go buy myself a mug and enjoy my birthday. Uh, the next time you see me live is tomorrow, of Happy course. Happy birthday. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, we, we start streaming at 1 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, and we don't stop for 12 hours. We're playing D&D. And uh, Call of Cthulhu and Warhammer is going to be great fun. So join us then. But thank you guys for joining us. And until next time, try not to roll too many at once. We want to be laughing when you do. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.